Good morning and welcome back to the Seasons of Self-Actualization mini podcast. My name is Shyla and I'm so grateful to be here with you today. Thank you so much for tuning in and being present with me. This is going to be a great episode and it's going to be one that will hopefully really shift something for you mentally and maybe create space and opportunities in this week that you might need. I am going to just dive right into the affirmations. I want to invite you to practice deep breaths on your own while I read this week's affirmation. This week's affirmation is, I deserve to give love to myself. I deserve to give love to myself. I deserve to give love to myself. So notice that it's not a forceful idea of you need to love yourself or you should love yourself. Those things can actually create a pressuring feeling to love yourself. And if you are personally not in a space or a place where you feel like you can love yourself, I just want to like acknowledge for a moment that I've been there for a really long time and some days I still feel like that and that we are really moving towards as a society a place of self-love and self-care and we love that but like sometimes it can be a little bit overboard and like a little bit pressuring like oh everybody's arriving at this place of self-love and I just want to acknowledge that you deserve to give love to yourself even if you don't feel like you love yourself so I want to point out the difference of to give love is to sometimes act upon a feeling to do something for yourself that shows love without you being in a place of feeling like you love yourself. This is a safe space and a non-judgmental space and I just wanted to acknowledge the fact that if you're not there yet that that's okay. Today I really want to talk about how to actually start showing yourself love, how to start living the life that you are actually deserving of and worthy of that you maybe haven't been able to give yourself yet. Totally understandable. Once again, we are in a place of no matter where you are on your journey to creating a life that you feel like you're thriving in, that it's all okay. The past few episodes and especially last week, we've been acknowledging that there are unpleasant and negative thoughts that we have in our minds and that they're usually conditionings or patterns and that they're very natural to have. And we have entertained the idea that we can start to create new thought habits. So I want you to imagine, what if every time that you had a thought that says, you'll never get there, or you hear that voice just be like, it will never happen for you. Can you imagine that there is actually a conversation within your mind that says, yes, you will get there. You can get there. Like what if every time you're about to be held back, you have a voice that propels you forward? What if instead of your mind feeling like your own worst enemy all the time, you feel like you also have a cheerleader and a best friend too? And notice I said also and too, it's because you aren't necessarily trying to get rid of this other voice that is maybe holding you back. You're trying to create a new thought habit to challenge that voice. You're trying to challenge these conditionings and it's completely normal and understandable and okay that they're still there. We're not trying to reject this part of ourselves, like even though it's our conditionings, that we're just trying to open up our mind for conversation instead of demands, okay? So I think that the art of creating a safe space within your mind is understanding where you actually have the power when you feel like you don't have power. So not assuming that you will always be able to control your thoughts because that's not actually the intention, but rather that you'll be able to organize them and see them for what they are and decide what to do with it. So they're still there. Your thoughts are still there, but you create space within your mind to start to notice where you can put them and what you can do with them and what you can say back. And you start to have a 
little bit more power within your mind, even though you can't control your thoughts. Today, I want to talk about building this compassionate voice in your mind that you deserve to have. And I promise that with practice, it is possible. I have now definitely a full dialogue in my head. Like, I mean, we're just being honest here. I do. And I think more people do too. We just don't really like talk about the voices in our head. Like not really that much because it sounds a little bit like, okay, you have voices in your head. Like, yeah, I have voices in my head, but like, I think you do too. But like we have actually a power to create dialogue. Like it's not only one kind of voice that's gonna control our lives. We can maybe not choose our thoughts, but choose what to listen to, right? And we can also choose what to put in our minds. So let's talk about that. Over the past couple of years, I have definitely cultivated a kind, compassionate, and gentle voice within my mind as well. And it has been great. Not that every day in my head goes easy, but like at least whenever I have a struggle within my mind, I can usually reason what's going on and have compassion for myself. And even whenever I can't come to making a decision and like act upon either voice, I at least can start to be compassionate towards myself through this process. So a great place to start after you have acknowledged that the thoughts are patterns. If you start practicing saying things that you would want to hear your new voice saying, then it will happen eventually. It is a repetitive thing and this is where affirmations or mantras can really become such an amazing tool because after you start to hear things over and over or read things over and over or say things to yourself over and over again, it only makes sense that they stay swirling in your mind and it only makes sense that it will become a habit like with anything that you do physically or action wise. So start practicing saying compassionate things to yourself, even if it feels weird and uncomfortable, just try to. And I'm telling you, once you get past this discomfort of being nice to yourself, because I've been there, truly, I have been like cringy discomfort, like nice to myself and I'm like who are you even okay but the more you do this the more natural it will become and if you start reading things more often like you can even put something on your home screen you can put something on your mirror on your wall like there's plenty of opportunity to put things around but do we do that not really it's not really a natural thing to us so like we have to make an effort to be nice to other people, but also to ourselves, okay? This might seem pretty basic, but like I said, we don't really do it, right? Yes, it is maybe a cliche thing, but like also, why haven't we done it, right? So like, let me invite you now to make a note somewhere or have a phrase that you wanna say to yourself on repeat to think about this week. So if you wanna pause this video and like figure out what that is for you, you're welcome to do that. And otherwise, I'm gonna give you a, another practice to help you cultivate this new compassionate side within your mind. So on top of hearing and thinking these new things, we need to practice building trust with this new voice. And this is a really interesting one, at least I think so too, because it really makes sense when you think about it. What it is, is it's like when you meet someone new, you don't just immediately trust them. Like you have to build trust with them before you feel comfortable with them, before you want to listen to what they have to say. Like, why do you want to just listen to this new random voice saying nice things to you, right? Like, so how are we going to build trust? with this voice. I have found that every time that I take an action upon whatever that voice has said, that I help solidify a new belief that I'm trying to create. So I'm going to give you an example. If I'm sitting on the couch and I hear in my head something like, you're so freaking lazy you will never get up off the couch today like I don't know and I start to go down this route I have come to a point where I can actually notice this first of all right like this is the place that we want to be where we're like okay I notice I'm being super critical towards myself that was a mean thought that didn't make me feel great that conditioning is really loud right like acknowledgement then I place that I organize that within my mind and say okay this is my tendency this is my tendency this is a voice that pops up into my head because it's my tendency, right? So then I've 
put it where it needs to go and then start to challenge it start to open up a conversation just be like is that really the full truth though like is there even a tiny percent chance that that's not the full truth because that sounds like a big claim right and then maybe the compassionate voice can find its way to you and be like probably i feel tired today and it makes sense that i want to chill but i think it might be better for me to go make myself a, a sandwich or a smoothie so then what you do to solidify this new idea this new voice that's like hey i love you and like you can go make yourself a sandwich like why do we listen to this voice right what we're gonna do to solidify this new thought and belief and like this new voice that we're trying to create is stand up off the couch that is how you're gonna prove your new voice right if you stay sitting on the couch and you keep letting this idea of you're lazy that's why you're staying on the couch make you stay on the couch even though you're maybe not lazy you're still staying on the couch so you're kind of proving a point to this other voice okay so we want to think the new thought but then act upon the new thought and i really understand that this can be a daunting idea or especially when you get paralyzed even by this other voice i have been there and getting up off the couch is just too hard because you're just you know you're spiraling i so get that a great practice for when you're at this point is to try to connect with your body and this is another reason why I start a lot of my podcast episodes trying to connect with yourself. The more that you can practice connecting with yourself and grounding yourself outside of your thoughts, the more opportunity you create to be brought into reality. Not that your your thoughts aren't your reality completely, but like we said, they're not the full truth, right? And if we're always living in something that's not the full truth, then we're not opening ourselves up to the opportunities that life is actually presenting us, right? So if we can start to ground ourselves, connect ourselves with our body, if we get grounded, we're kind of like, oh, I'm here in this present moment. I have a choice in what I do. Like, it is a process, but if you can start to, to connect with your body, a way to do this is to pinch yourself a little bit or you can do the deep breathing. Breath is a great way to connect your mind and your body. You can also just do a movement, right? So like if the task was to get up off the couch and you feel like you can't get off the couch, can you move your fingers? Bring attention and awareness to your body. So no matter how you choose to go about this, it's really important to start building trust with this new voice by solidifying it with a small action. And I'm telling you, a small action is enough. It is enough every small action that you can get yourself to do based upon a voice of compassion and something that's good for you and helping you get to where you want to go is a win okay and no matter how you choose to go about this like find a way that works for you observe yourself like figure out different ways to do this like it's all customizable there's no one right way it's just the idea that we're trying to provoke that this is possible for you and no matter what it is just such an underrated skill to be able to shift from a negative thought or mindset to one where you can not only feel safe hopefully within yourself but also to be able to function maybe on a on a basic level like you deserve but also how you might need to function and want to function and developing this skill is so worthwhile i want to thank you so so much for taking the time to not only sit here with me and my thoughts but to also be present with yourself today and invest in yourself today like those things are also underrated but like such a big deal and i want to acknowledge you for it if you want to share something that you've learned or talk about it with someone i really hope that this space will be a place for you to do that and I would really love to hear if there was something that you learned or something that you would like to share. So definitely let me know. And otherwise, I hope that you have a really great week and I encourage you to keep going, even if that means sitting still with yourself, sitting still with your thoughts and being present with yourself a little bit more. Make sure to tune in again on Monday to set yourself up for another great week here in this lovely space. Thanks again.